I'm Master Chief McAdams, retired from the Coast Guard, going on 27 years. I used to teach uh, classes there for 20 years after I got out in hypothermia. In hypothermia, each and every one of us with our unique lifestyles is vulnerable. And this alone should be a good reason why each and every one of us should know the silent killer hypothermia. There are two types of hypothermia. They're on what we call on land, which is slow, called chronic. And it attacks the body slowly because temperatures are very mild. And if you're out walking and the temperatures are down uh, in the 40s or even a little bit lower than that, you don't realize that you're getting cold until it's too late. And as, it's, as hypothermia sets in, the body starts to slow down. And as the body slows down, you stop thinking about what's really happening to you. The other is acute, and that is immersion in a total liquid, usually always water. And once you go into the water, hypothermia in cold water can set in within just 10 or 15 minutes. Cold water is anything that is below 70 degrees, below 70 degrees. Our water temperature out here off of Newport runs on an average of around 50, 52 degrees most of the year round. Variants sometimes in the summer a little bit warm. I can remember one summer that the water actually came into the bay here and out to the whistle buoy where it was 60 degrees. It moved in from the Japanese current and we, we thought we were in uh, the tropics, uh, there was 60 degree water. It was really warm up to 8, 10 degrees from what we were used to. And uh, we actually went out swimming in it. We, we thought it was great. I really think that you can build up an immunity to cold water and cold weather by living in it and using it all the time. But the average person getting hypothermia, have you ever had hypothermia? I would think that most everybody that is watching this has had hypothermia at one time. Shivering is the first stage of hypothermia. If you start to shiver and you're getting cold and then you can't really stop that shivering, that's the first stage of hypothermia. And you got to do something about it. And I always say, put a hat on. And I say, wool hat. That is one of the best. There's Gore-Tex, there's polypropylene and marine wool, and there's new materials that are out over the years that uh, are made to fight off cold. But wool, most uh, materials, and I say wool because that retains the most body heat when it's wet. Regularly uh, clothes like I have on now, wool clothes, or actually cotton clothes, not wool, cotton clothes will, when wet, will, re will reduce 90% of its insulated value. So most of us that are walking around or out in the open are wearing cotton clothes that are very vulnerable to the cold. I always say if you're going to go out, wear a couple, take an extra pair of socks with you and keep your feet warm at all times. Let's take a on land hypothermia. If you're getting cold or you feel that way, particularly elderly people, they get cold faster and they don't realize that they're getting cold that fast. And then if they sit down to rest, usually there's no place to really just sit down any place so they sit some in the dampness and you start getting cold right away and then you start to shiver. And once you stop shivering, you're going into the heavier stages of hypothermia. And from that on, Anything below 95 degree body temperature starts to send the body into uh, a phase into hypothermia and you can be start having slurred speech and stumbling and things going matter with you that's not really the normal thing that you do and it happens slowly over a long period of time whereas on the acute total immersion in water especially cold water like out here, once you hit that water, you have what they call torsal reflex. Torsal reflex is when you hit the water and you can't take a breath and you go, <gasps> and as you're doing this, 
your face goes into the water and you get water in your mouth and you can't breathe and the water goes down and you get what we call going down the wrong pipe. And it's, you get a, a little bit, just a teeny bit into the lungs and you start to cough and you can't get another breath and you get another br big gulp of water and you actually die of suffocation. Suffocation is too little oxygen and too much carbon dioxide in the blood and you die of suffocation. And that's what happens when you go in. And regular torsal reflex, if you just hit and you have, there's pain, pain, you hurt, that your chest tightens up and that cold water hits you and you go like this. And that's why so many people, when they hit the water and they get the torsal reflex and you can't swim, your muscles start tightening up and you can't swim, you can't go on and you have a lot of problems. And that's where you end up, you die. You die of suffocation uh, of too little oxygen in the blood. How much oxygen is there in the air? We have 21% of oxygen in the air. 78% is nitrogen and 1% is just carbons and gases and uh, drop with the water. And that's what makes up our atmosphere. So out of 21%, that's the oxygen that we have to breathe on. So when you go down and they come up and the paramedics are there, they will give you oxygen uh, and what they call liters. And they give you so many liters to get you back up to get you the right amount of oxygen into your blood. One of the things that happens when you fall overboard or fall into the water, they say, that, what do you do if you're in the water, you fall in the water? Well, the first thing you do is get out. And if you can't get out, then you have to do certain things. That's why a life jacket is so important to our borders that are going out. Years ago, very few people wore life preservers for life jackets. Uh, nowadays, uh, I noticed that probably 90% or better of the boaters are wearing their life jackets all the time. And they really do a nice job because they keep you warm in your chest. There's five major areas in your body that you lose heat. There's radiation. Your body is like a giant radiator and you radiate heat out from the body. Then there's respiration. You're breathing. You breathe in cold air and you breathe out warm. You breathe out over two pints of water every day. Two pints. So you want to keep your system full. I always say keep your tank half, half full or better because being low on water and getting cold helps set in hypothermia that much faster. Then there is respiration. Like I said, the two pints of water a day. And then evaporation, you sweat. And as you sweat, the sweat takes heat away from the body and you start getting cold faster. Then there is conduction where the body touches anything lower than body temperature will reduce the body temperature. Then there's convection. Convection is air or water moving around you. And as that moves around you, particularly in the water, uh, takes all, away all the heat from your body very, very fast. Wind uh, will do it uh, also very fast, especially in cold weather. If you're in water and the water swirling around, it will take away 90% of the heat from your, your body compared to temperature of the same outside. So it's very important to wear proper clothes. Wearing a, different layers of clothes is very important. If you have like a t-shirt and then you had another shirt over it, and then maybe a jacket or something over it, and then maybe a heavy coat. You now have layers of clothing on you and it traps air in between those layers and it takes a long time uh, for the water to seep through and, and finally take all the warmth away from you, uh, from your body. So it's very important that you wear clothes uh, in layers if you can possibly do it.